Good morning. Welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing Live. I'm Tony Haggerty at a Haggerty 10. It's Tuesday, the 5th of December. Countdown's on, as we all know. And today, I'm delighted to be joined by Kevin McKenna, the irrepressible Kevin McKenna. How are you, sir? I'm good, Tony. I'm good. Decent it's... weekend. Yes. Got there yeah. in the end. At... <laughs> I was going to say Mutant Park, wasn't it? <laughs> now, now, that is a Celtic Dar reference. For all, for all of you out there, yes. For all of you out there, that was St Johnston's previous uh, stadium incarnation, yes. Uh, Mutant Park, yeah, indeed. But yes, we'll talk about all of that. Hope you all enjoyed Hamish's debut yesterday. Looking forward to more of Hamish uh, as the weeks and months, years hopefully go forward. Hamish, great addition, so... Nice one. But first things first, as you know, we big up our sponsors, pointing to them right now. And the morning briefing is brought to you by MPH Group and their Scotland's award-winning family-run all-trade specialist covering all our mainland Scotland. And with winter rolling in, if you're thinking of giving your home heating system a boost, MPH is an enticing Navian boiler winter promotion for you. And if you opt for a Navian boiler installation through MPH Boilers, you're choosing top tier efficiency and you're also getting a free Navian internet controller and that little gadget can crank up your boiler's efficiency to an impressive 98%. And the cherry on top of all of that is that they're covering the first year service with no added costs and MPH even offer flexible finance options. So if you're gearing up for a winter chill, consider making a smart move with MPH and Navian and you'll find all the links to MPH's social media sites and telephone number in the description of this video. Kevin, you said the words there, we got there in the end. First and foremost, want to get your thoughts on St. Johnson 1, Celtic 3, and all the kind of fallout from that, with the manager saying it was the angriest he's ever been, gave the players a rocket at half-time, came out second half, Captain Calmack with a wonderful half-volley, Matt O'Reilly with a goal of the season contender and James Forrest with a typical James Forrest kind of side footy thing that he does with the ball after brilliant work from uh, Tomoki Iwata. So, yep, got there in the end, Kevin. But were you intrigued by the manager's comments, intrigued by the performance? I was, um, I was slightly puzzled. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know we didn't. I know we didn't play brilliantly in the first half, but again, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm just getting kind of more indulgent as I get older, but unlike other games where we've gone in at half time wondering how we're going to break down the defence, I, I, I didn't really have any worries. I, I thought, you know, we're, we're going to score here because even though we weren't moving the ball about as slickly, as uh, the manager wanted. Again, we created three outstanding chances. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps more. The goal, yeah, few worries there. Although, <clears throat> although I think that if Celtic had scored that sort of goal at the other end, there would have been a, a, a menu of options <laughs> There would have been a menu of options for the VAR team. <laughs> this allowed that you know they could have gone. Well, this one's easy because you know you could have a handball. There, there looks like there was a wee shove in there. Somebody was shoving somebody, and they would have been quite relaxed at, um, <laughs> at this the goal. I'm not saying that it, it, it wasn't a goal. I know there were claims of a handball. I'm not convinced by that. And if there was, um, the ball was probably in the back of the net or over the line. And um, I'm not convinced that there was there was an actual shove because you know we're supposed to we've got big units there and you shouldn't be getting shoved about anyway. So now nah, I've not really any complaints, but I'm laugh I'm oh. laughing here, Kevin, with that plethora of options because I've referred to this a couple of times. But remember, not the view did the kind of spoof on there was it the old shoot and it was like you are the ref and they were yes. giving scenarios. Sure. And the, la the last one was always E, book Paul Elliott. So, <laughs> <laughs> I was just waiting you saying yeah. that there. <laughs> you know, a shove, a handball, uh, whatever, an E, book Paul Elliott. So, yeah, that was kind of your drop-down menu. 
Yeah. So there you go. Again, you know, I I I, I kind of wonder that that was the, the most worrying aspect was the St Johnson goal because I think um you know and, and as with Motherwell during the week, uh sorry, last week, um I think teams now know that balls delivered well into our penalty area are going to cause some uh, a degree of angst amongst our back <laughs> and goalkeeper. Um, and that, you know, we'll see that as a tactic. So yeah. I'm seeing that. So I'm presuming that, um, I'm presuming John Kennedy is, is trying to work out a strategy or, you know, is taking the defenders and working out a strategy for dealing with these, you know, who, who takes who, um, what the movement should be, when the keeper comes, when he shouts, because, you know, there was chaos when that ball got put in, as there was at Parkhead against Motherwell, as there has been on two or three occasions in the Champions League. Um, but beyond that, we created chances. I had, you know, I had no doubt we'd create more chances. We began to move the ball more quickly. And we got the three goals, could have been two or three more. What was I pleased about? Well, you and I talked about, you and I are confirmed Mikey Johnson fans, always have been. Um, I think we talked about it a few weeks ago that we would, we just we just want to give him as my, as, I mean, I know that you can't give somebody endless opportunities, but we were, ex we were prepared to extend um, more generosity to him, not least because he's had terrible injury problems. Um, but there was something, there was something about um, the way he played against St. Johnson, but also we saw it when he came on against Lazio. Um, and, you know, wingers uh, playing for Celtic, you know, a big part of their performance levels uh, is rooted in confidence. You know, having the confidence to take a player on, um, having the backing of the fans, because I, I think you pointed out to me a while ago that sometimes it can be frustrating, to put it um, to put it mildly, when Celtic white men, because of their proximity to the supporters, they pick up. Yeah, the negative vibes, the abuse more, and and we seem to kind of we seem to give it out more to our our kind of our, our homegrown or Scottish players. I mean, I can even remember Aidan McGeady, who I who who you know, I I thought McGeady was a special talent, was brilliant for us, and all I kept hearing was end product, end product, because it was like a phrase commonly used that was in vogue by deeply unimaginative um myopic uh sky and bt and bbc commentators um and all i'm seeing is a wonderful magical footballer who made loads of goals and our fans began to buy into this narrative where's the end product and you're kind of like do you not know what you're seeing here you know this guy's different class Mm. Um, Mikey Johnson showed elements of that on the right in, um, against St. Johnson and on the left when he came on against Lazio and he should be telling himself and so should the manager if you can you know, if you can come on and prove to be a handful against a top class European team then you've nothing to fear son, he's also got a couple of caps underneath his um, belt that's a kind of mixed metaphor, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a couple of appearances for uh, the Republic of Ireland. And yeah. I'd, be, I'd be delighted. <laughs> Just waiting you, wait you see a fresh pair of legs off his sleeve there, right? Yes, if, he get, <laughs> if, he gets a, if he gets a start soon, as, as Brendan Rogers alluded to. And I just hope that if he gets a few starts, that the fans will be patient. Um, yeah towards him, you know, they'll just give him a bit of time to play his way into a game. He's still, I love the fact he's still the right side of 25. Um, 
and I, I just I'm just desperate for him to do well. Um, the goals were sumptuous. All the goals were sumptuous. I love when Callum McGregor hits a ball at that. <laughs> but there's there's something about yep. when Callum gets a hold of a ball just in and around the box and how sweetly he hits it. There's something aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> you know, it's um it's just the way a football should be hit. And you, you, it usually ends up in the back of the rigging, doesn't it? You I know it's, 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 time, so it's all good. It's just lovely to watch. And yeah, well, Matt O'Reilly, what a finish. Him and his um his Zen philosophies <laughs> and his his um yeah, he seems to be in a good place, Matt O'Reilly. Yeah. Um so yeah, three one against St Johnson. St Johnson were coming into this game with a bit of confidence, Craig Levine. Knows the game inside out, knows how to play against Celtic. Um, and, you know, they, they'd begun to kind of steady the ship. So you'll take before the game 3 1 St. Johnson, McDermott Park, no bother. So I was slightly, I was slightly kind of puzzled that, that Brendan saying he's never been so angry. I'm sitting there thinking, you know, uh, you know we'll score, no bother. <laughs> no. On that note, he was asked yesterday if the next challenge for Mikey Johnson to Moki Iwata was to start games and if he felt he was ready, if the both of them were ready for that. And he sort of teased it yesterday by saying, yes, they will have the opportunity to do that. Now, I'm like you, Kev, I like joining lines, connecting dots, as I say, and all that kind of stuff. They're in my team for tomorrow. Spoiler alert for the start of 11, but I've got to okay Iwata and Mikey Johnson starting for the very reasons he, the manager said Mikey Johnson was outstanding, his contribution on Sunday. And we've all we've been here before with Mikey Johnson in the kind of last chance saloon and all that kind of stuff. But I think he, he is a confidence player. And it's the kind of the the, the whole sum of the parts we now need from Mikey. You were talking about there, the kind of end product with relation to McGeady. And I think that's one of the one of the major criticisms of Mikey Johnston, isn't it? So, but I think if he can get an extended run of games, then that confidence will come. And I think if there was ever a Celtic player in need of a goal to lift his spirits as well, I think Mikey Johnston is that man. And I think he could thrive if he can keep himself fit because Rogers seems to see something uh, in him as well. But you're obviously seeing that. I, I, I admitted on here, I, I've been quite a a vociferous critic of him, but I'm willing to give him that kind of one last chance to see if he can be the player that everybody thinks. And because he, he has plenty of skills in his locker, he can he can beat a man. Lovely, the manager said he's one of the best one and one guys he sees in training. We'll come back to his thoughts on training in a minute on another couple of players, but you know, so he's clearly doing something to impress the manager. He just now has to transfer that onto the. Park did it against Lazio. He, they looked lively against Lazio, and then he came on on Sunday and had a, a big bearing in the outcome of that game. So I think, and I said yesterday, if you don't start him on Wednesday, when are you ever going to start him? And I think you run the risk of demoralising him if you yeah. don't start him on Wednesday. You know, so I'm going to start him on my team on Wednesday. Hopefully, all just does the same. Yeah, I agree. And uh, you know, Iwata's. Uh, 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 you know, I know we're going to come on to um, uh, Brendan Rogers' comments about uh, Lager Bielke and Abrokne, but um, I think Iwata probably is an example of someone who, you know, had uh, knew, we all knew, he, and he knew that he had to do a bit of work to get into that team because we're, you know, we're, we're overladen with, um, mm -hmm. with, with players in in the middle and I think uh, I think it looks as if he's he's been doing the hard work and training and yeah. I think um, you know and, he, and so he's I think we um, I think we can sometimes underestimate um, you know the value uh, or the validity of a good week of training I think some of us should who've never played at that level and don't really have any access to it, um, the mindset 
um, we think, you know, well, if you're brilliant one week and you played really well and you're on a, a roll, then it doesn't, you know, you'll, you'll be in the team. Um, but, you know, presumably the, the, the manager wants to see the right attitude and the right application in, uh, you know, in, in the training sessions because that's partly contributes to the salary and the contractual <laughs> obligations, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's good, and it's good. I think it's good for Awata and the others that, that Brendan Rogers acknowledges um, effort, acknowledges somebody just hanging in, getting a chance and taking it. I'm big on training, Kevin. I've banged on about it for long and weary that you talk about those attitudes and behaviours. And I believe a lot of Brendan Rodgers' teams are picked on that in training. He doesn't just go with the, you know, the, the, they've played well. Uh, but there is an element of, okay, it's your jersey to lose, that yellow jersey thing that I talk about until the France. But, uh, you know, players have to show the right commitment attitude. Like Scales, he's come in and he's spoken about Scales and he said he's, he's done very well. So, you know, the... The title of the briefing is What is the future hold for Gustav Lagerbjerg and Mike Dubrovsky? Now, the manager spoke about them yesterday. He was asked directly about what uh, Gustav Lagerbjerg and Mike Dubrovsky had to do to get into the team. And this is what he said. I think it is always personality. I think with the young players coming in, there are players ahead of them. But all what always catches my attention is training. I am out there every day watching training and when I see players train and work with that personality, then they will always edge their way closer to my thinking. I have said before our squad is quite big and there are players who have been ahead of them. Unfortunately for the likes of Mike and Gustav, Liam has come into the team and really took his opportunity. We've also got Nat Phillips who has been brilliant since he has been here and has been a real positive influence and it's the one area of the team you don't really want to change too much especially when both players are fit, as it, as it is all about the two players playing. For any player, it is about what they do in training, as that is all you can do. You can't get too disappointed. If you're working hard, then hopefully those opportunities will come for you. Now, that's a stark warning to those two guys, isn't it? That, yeah, yeah. And you know, Go on, you go, sorry. I was intrigued by the reference to Nat Phillips. So was I. That's because, what caught my attention. You mentioned him because you know, um, if you were if you were thinking, you know, there's one or two players who maybe not given everything in training or aren't showing the right attitude, you would have plumped for him simply because he's here in loan from a massive club like Liverpool. You know, there would be a there, there's maybe a degree of disappointment, um, mm -hmm. frustration that he's ended up on loan and not getting starts. Um, so you would have thought, I'm not, I wouldn't excuse it, but you would have thought, you know, if anybody was maybe going to have a, a challenge with them um, getting up for training, getting in the, the right uh, frame of mind, it would be somebody, um, somebody like that in those circumstances. And I, and I think um, Brendan Rogers probably was very pointed in mentioning him, saying more or less saying, if Nat Phillips can show the right attitude and the right rigor and application and training, given his circumstances, where he's been, who he's trained with, who he's played with, then so should everybody else. Yeah. Um, and I mean, frankly, <laughs> you have to you have to wonder, you know. These two guys were were bought for you know they, they came for significant money in the Celtic eight, terms. They'll be eight, on eight million quid between the two yeah. Kevin, right? So. so they'll be on significant you know wages, and they're young. You know they're they're at the height of their physical powers. They've got superb training facilities. They're trained with great players. You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> Uh, What's your boss said in, <laughs> in public? He's more or less saying, "You've not shown the right attitude, guys." Yep. Well, you know what's all that about? Yep. And, um, and even, even the guy on loan, 
would be ahead of you in the picking order yeah. Yeah. if I was if I was to drop Liam Scales at this. And also, also I think it was a kind of coded message to those upstairs. Just because they were signed for big money doesn't mean I have to play them. Yeah, they won't, they won't play in my team unless all the circumstances and attitude application is right. You know, so I, I I think it was again we'll go back to the R word recruitment. They might not have been what Brendan Rodgers wanted, but it was what he was given. As he said at the start when he came in, I work with the players I'm given, and then he said at the EGM that kind of flipped to. There's not a player that comes in that I don't have a say on. But you does you do wonder about who signed off on these deals, don't you? Yeah, well we you know we touched on it last week. Yeah. You know the outsourcing mm-hmm. issue at Celtic Park. Yes. Um who's in charge of that? Uh to what extent do we have an exclusive agreement with one particular operation? Um and to what extent, if we do have that that kind of arrangement, um, you know, we our choices are narrowed. No matter what the manager wants, no matter um, what he thinks. Yeah. And you know, there might there might be nothing to see here, but there are some questions requiring to be answered um, from Celtic. But then again, you know, <laughs> mm. it's funny. I mean, I cover politics and social affairs and the day job so to speak and <laughs> and newspapers and the media and you know opposition politicians quite rightly will talk about transparency and accountability by public bodies by the people that we elect you know they're all over them if they attempted to cover things up if they've been a wee bit uh, slow in releasing information which we're entitled to but then when it comes to our football, where we've got a direct stake in the team by, by virtue of the amount of money that we pay yeah. to watch them, travel to watch them, buy the merchandise, the memorabilia, um, sign up for Celtic TV, everything. Um, and uh, we get next to nothing back, you know, that if we could, <laughs> we get treated with, there's no, there's no two ways of saying this, and and we go along with it. We're 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 you know partly responsible for this, but we get treated with contempt. Celtic fans get treated with contempt by the Celtic board. The last time, the board, the custodians, if you like, <laughs> um, treated us with a bit of respect and did try to communicate issues that were happening behind the scenes and I'm I'm not saying we need to know everything you know yeah. for a business you don't want to be showing your your hand how you go about things for your competitors etc but um there's enough an, an awful lot that doesn't get communicated and and there you know various fan groups various ordinary fans have been asking questions about recruitment for a few years, um, who 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 does it? What sort of relationships do we have with agents? Is there a you know is is there a kind of preferential option for one particular firm that may or may not be linked through family ties to to the Celtic board? Um, so no matter what Brendan Rogers says about controlling transfers, and and you know I like the way that he's talking because. Um, that was obviously an issue first time around for him. Yeah. Um, so he's putting down a mark, but you know, then um, he can. He might be ask, asking all he wants. Uh, but what is the the nexus of um, what is the network of of relationships behind the scenes with regard to our recruitment? Because it's been patchy, and 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 that kind of. You know the kind of two to four and a half million bracket. Yeah, um, there have just been too many players that we brought in for good money, and it just hasn't happened. And I think from his comments, as he's he's not prepared, 
to put up with it, to be honest, Kevin. I've got a few comments coming in, so I'll read a few of them out. Dennis Jameson, I think Rogers put it in a nutshell yesterday when he mentioned those two. He's obviously saying they've got to put the work in and training to prove that they deserve to be in this team. Tilly is also the same. And Mikey Boy coming in saying, Hi everyone, I guess we'll find out if Rocky Lagger and Tilly have the determined personality to want to succeed at Celtic, putting the gra hard graft or not. Brendan Rogers has said it's over to them. Totally agree with that. Uh, Pat McLaughlin saying, Considering that our biggest fee over the summer, it is concerning that our biggest fee over the summer isn't anywhere near it yet. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Colin Rogers, no hiding place for non contributors. And I think Brendan's alluding to that too. That got to show me something here. Well, there's that. Sorry. On you go, Michael Ross saying he always gives players a chance, doesn't like to judge too quickly. But <laughs> Mikey Johnson's had seven years. <laughs> might be good enough. But, uh, fair enough. Okay, okay. No worries. Michael, you're entitled to your opinion. Maestro 95, Iwata and McGregor can dovetail each other. McGregor loves going for his team. He most certainly does. And Dennis James is saying it's a concern that both of them are not pulling their weight. That's a huge concern for me that the two big signings are the same other ones. Well, seen. the other, in, in, in purely practical terms, um, you saw what happened with us at the start of the season. We yeah. didn't have a, a central defensive partnership, hence how big Liam Scales comes in and takes his chance. At any given moment, you know, because of the 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 ebb and flow of fortunes, injuries, surfaces uh, during the course of a season, you know, we 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 we, we could have need very suddenly for mm -hmm. one of those centre half, you know, a centre half. A defensive midfielder, you know, any position to come forward because you know we're in peril. We haven't, um, you know, we've had injuries, and and now we effectively know that if anything, if there's if there's a couple of injuries, and look, I mean, look what's happened with, uh, with Spurs. <laughs> happened with Spurs down south. Yeah, half their team get wiped out in the course of two games. So we lose a couple of players. We now know that um, there's doubts over our two biggest signings before the season been able to step in if asked to. That's not good. It also it also tells the opposition. Yeah. You know, mm, they're vulnerable here. Now I'm, I'm I would never accuse, never accuse any manager or opposition players, you know, let's let's ask some questions, right? Um because uh, they don't have any replacements. <laughs> but you but, would, wouldn't you? Ah well well maybe you, I'm maybe you, I'm letting you and maybe I'm opening a door into my own black soul. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> but if 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 I see Gustav Lager, Bielka, or Mike Dubrovsky in that Celtic team, and I'm an opposition player, I'm targeting them. Hi. I'm going to see how they like it. Mm. You know, I'm going to make life as uncomfortable as possible. And I don't think any manager worth their salt wouldn't be doing their job if they said, "See if there's any vulnerability there. Pray on that. Do them." Yeah, let's, let's see. Yeah. Let's see what they're made of. Let's see what they've got. And I think Brendan Rodgers is concerned as well because it's December. We're nearly unwrapping Christmas presents. These guys were signed in the summer, and if he's not seen the attitude and application that you you need at a club like Celtic by Christmas, alarm bells are ringing, and he's making it public that. And I think he's saying, you know, I'm not one. I'm not prepared to put up with this. These are guys that dot 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 I was given, and they're no they're no stepping up to the mark, you know. And the, the you said it there. The mention of Nat Phillips, who's on loan to January, was telling for me because he was saying I'd be playing that guy before any of you mm. two, mm. and that says more about you than anything because you see this is a guy who's who's at Anfield, Liverpool, and he's training with superstars. Yet he's been bang on since he came here. Everything about him's been been fine, and people have keep waiting for Liam Scales kind of fairy tale to taper off, don't they? And a loss of form or whatever. But even if he was to rotate Scales, which I don't think he would at this minute, because there's no reason to. But Nat Phillips would get the nod, wouldn't he? That says a lot. Yeah, yeah. You look at you look at Harry Maguire at Manchester United, ridiculed, mocked, yeah. scorned. Part of that, of course, is just absolutely outrageously 
<laughs> I amount of money they went he came to Manchester United for, but that's not that's not his fault. Um and uh he's played himself back into that Manchester United team. He's shown the application, he's a multi-millionaire. You know, people say, you know, well, he's a multi-millionaire, he can you know, we shouldn't give anybody any um leeway, but hey, he, he's still a young bloke wanting to play his football. And and him, you know, he, he's been mocked. Um he's been you know, he's he his skill has been questioned. He's been out of the team, his manager couldn't bring himself to praise him, and you know, the captain of man you know, he had his captaincy relief from him, and there was every and 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 he had the opportunity to leave Manchester United. So humiliated from pillar to post, and he's basically knuckled down. Yeah. Hasn't complained. Something of that stature, he's he's still captain of England, isn't he? Or is he? Um and he's he's knuckled down, he's done the business away from the part, he's been there, he's basically said, Well, you know, I'll accept this, but I'm I'm ready to play, and he's played himself back in. If something like that in his stature, after the public humiliation he's had can do it, then there's there's just no excuse yeah. for any other pro. And they should look to people at him and also at a different level, Liam Scales. The manager mentioned the phrase going through the motions. I just think he was well, I, I wasn't, it wasn't good to him, that was it. <laughs> and and I uh, and I said I believe he's directing that at certain individuals. Hmm. I think the two defenders being uh you know the kind of focus of that and also the way the team played in the first half against St Johnson. But when you're saying things like that and you're saying to players you're not going through the motions at Celtic, not in my watch. You know, that, that's a big wake-up call. Mm, mm. And you know, one, one of the commenters here, I'll flick this up, Colin Rogers is saying lacking personality doesn't mean non-effort. They're just not pushing on at 100%. I'm not accusing them of, I'm not giving their all. Uh, I don't see them at training, but I'm going with what the manager says. So if they lack personality, but they're certainly lacking something in training as well. Now, whether that's effort or application, then the manager didn't really expand on that. But when he's telling you they're going to have to go some to still get into the team, then there's clearly a problem there. Yeah. And do we... Ad- I mean, it's one thing saying we need to address that in, this, in, in uh, the January transfer window. Um but you know, by the time the January transfer window uh, starts, we'll have played Rangers again. Um, but we know that we're, there's not going to be any football, European football after Christmas. Um, so while we're all saying, "Well, this needs strengthened, this needs strengthened, that needs strengthened," um, I'm also thinking, "Well, you know, if we're if we're sitting comfortably eight, ten points ahead of Rangers, and there isn't any European football." You know, do I want us to be panic buying? Um, given the size of our squad, you know, are we wanting to kind of because this is what has got us into trouble in the past? Um, yeah. I'd I'd be like, I'd be looking at um something more viable for the summer. I'd be, you know, the mm-hmm. scouting net, network such as it is, whoever's in charge of it. Um. I'd be getting, I'd hope that they're getting tasked by Rogers several weeks ago. I want to see oh, yeah. Yeah. a list. I want to see a short list or a long list of players in half a dozen positions. And I want it on my desk um, by March. And then we'll have a talk and say, right, who do we seriously go for? And the board are told, this is how much money, this is the ballpark we're playing in. Um, and we need, we need these by early summer so they're ready for the Champions League yeah. season. And that hasn't, I just, I've had no confidence that that has taken place. That kind of, I think it's been, let's finish ahead of Rangers. Look at Rangers, you know, they don't have two um, hateneys to rub together. Uh, we're, we're comfortably ahead of them. If they get close, you know, if they hire a decent manager, you know, well, you know, we'll just sort of, 
slip into another gear. You know, we'll get Callum to rescue us. We'll get um, we'll get Wee Kyogo, you know, poach a couple of goals because he loves a goal against Rangers. That's that's a provincial um, low grade mindset, but it's what seems to have dominated whatever passes for our strategy over the last few years. And I'm I'm hoping um, that that Brendan Rodgers is putting down those markers and saying, no, it's not going to happen anymore. Well, I think he is putting down those markers because I think he's sort of saying, this is not what I came back for. And whilst these players were bought, I'm not necessarily going to play them if they're not shown to me what a Celtic first-team player looks like in training. That's basically what he's telling me. And and it's a surprise, isn't it? I, I know they both came in and got injured very early in their Celtic careers, but you would think the two of them would be bursting a gut to get back in. And I, I just I was shocked when I read those comments yesterday from Rogers pertaining to Lager Bielka and Nabrowski. Utterly shocked because yeah. you were thinking Certainly with Navrovsky, you might have been thinking he's going to be pushing soon, but, you know, it uh, doesn't fill me with any great hope or desire that either or will be pushing for a first-team place soon, considering, as you say, he brought, he brought the Nat Phillips element into that equation as well. So I think that these guys, there's, there's going to have to be serious chat with these guys, isn't there, about something or other moving forward, because he has spoken about trimming the squad. They've got 32, he wants 25. And I'm not saying that they don't have a future at the club game. I'm not scaremongering like that, because they, they paid good money for them. But they're going to have to start doing something to earn a, you know the right to play in Brendan Rodgers' Celtic team. And also, we've, you know, we've got the little matter of a Champions League game against Feyenoord. Coming up. I, I want to be fine. So do I. You know, this goes back to 1970. <laughs> you get two and a half um, million for winning as well, Kevin. So it all adds up. Yeah. And um and, and this is the other thing. Um, no matter what weaknesses we might have in the group, as now we all oh, everyone talks about them. Used to be the squad, didn't it? Now it's the group. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um uh if if this has been if this has been prevalent for for a couple of months, um, you're going to the Champions League. You you want you, you want competition. You want competition for every place. You want you want your two um, who are in possession of the two uh, central defensive positions to know that they're not guaranteed every week because there's somebody just as good. That's that's how the top teams operate. Yeah, just that, just that little extra mental edge, you know. Not saying that they're not getting given a hundred percent, but it's that little mental edge. They know that there's somebody who's really, really good, um, who can just come in at a moment's notice. But um, but Scales and Carter Vickers have probably known for weeks. Actually, that's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, if this is what uh, Brendan's telling us. And we're, and we're going in, you know, to this game against you, uh, Feyenoord, and it's about prestige, because one, the kind of most wretched thing, but the fact that, I, mean, I think I posted on Twitter after the Lazio game that we've only won one in 15. I was wrong. We won one in 23 Champions League games, going back to uh, when uh, we get ripped apart by Barcelona. <laughs> um, at the new camp, so it's four four Champions League sections since then. One victory against Anderlecht away. Um, so Celtic's prestige, historic legacy, if you like, has been taken a battering, and we need every win. Doesn't matter if it's a dead. There's no such thing as a dead rubber, as far as I'm concerned, in the Champions League because um, you know it, it's about saying to the rest of Europe. That result, Celtic to Feyenoord one, mm. decent team. That Feyenoord are a good team. Uh, we we need a victory. It doesn't matter if we've got no um, European football after Christmas. That game against Feyenoord is crucial 
and it's crucial because of why we are Celtic fans, our reputation um, across the, the planet, uh, the, the historic legacy of the great European teams we've had. We need a win. And if you're going to get a win, you have to have a squad of 25, all of whom are fighting for places. And at the moment, according to our manager, that's not the case. Yeah. Gary Thompson comes in and he says, these are like indirect comments towards the board who do not attend training every day. So they'll probably ask Brendan Rodgers why they are not playing. And he's explained why without getting into trouble directly. That's a fair point. The question's probably yeah. I've been asked about £8 million worth of talent yeah. on the bench and not getting a look in. And Brendan's telling them, isn't he? And I say yeah. it's, a, it's a warning shot over the bow that he, he won't put up with it moving forward. It's yeah. not why he came back. And I'm glad he did. And I'm glad. I see that after on Sunday, the, the reaction. I was delighted he came out swinging and said to players about the first half performance. I know you say it's what we weren't too perturbed about it, but I want my manager to do that if he feels that his team and the way he sent them out and the way they've played falls below any kind of bar that they set themselves. So I, I was delighted to hear him say that. I think it's what was required. It did the job. They came back strongly and could have won five, six, one even by the end up. So the last 20 odd minutes were, were what you were used to, certainly. And once Callum McGregor scored, the result for me wasn't in any doubt. Up until that point, I was thinking it might be one of those other St. Johnston, Hibs, Motherwell type games where they couldn't break them down. But uh, and, yeah. Yeah. and good old Joe Hart, we gave him a wee bit of a doing the other week. Um, but good old Joe doing what yes. he does, which he still does best. And you know, we, we still need to be looking at that position, obviously. But that was a cracking save. It was. Cracking save. And can I say something about James Forrest? You're talking about, talking about application, you're talking about setting a yeah. good example. You know, most of us would have had him off in the summer. Um, you would be playing for Motherwell or something. Um, and <laughs> Uh, both Brendan Rogers and Ange Postacoglu have, have, have openly said in the last couple of years he remains an integral part of the squad. Now, part of it will because he because of his experience, but a lot of it will also because of his application and training, his attitude. But you look again at that goal; he started running. He started running from um, just outside our own our penalty area um, as that ball was getting yeah. the box. and. He's the oldest player on the team. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're 2-1 we're up. It's a few minutes to go. And and he just, he, he was there. Uh, he basically ran more or less the length of the pitch. And then... And he, then cleared, this something about he cleared physical. the ball, didn't he? He cleared the he, ball. So. Well, also, you know, it says something about his physical fitness. Because there's one thing, you know, running most of, you know, most of the length of the pitch... <laughs> But then also still remaining fit enough and mind and body at the end of a long marsh run at that age to control it very, very neatly and, and do that lovely instep, you know, kind of the way that he... He's perfected that, goals. hasn't he? You've seen that go against yeah. St. Johnson that we've done in fact before. I think it was Hamish Carton that said that. He's seen that goal scored by <laughs> four. It was deja vu and it was. And uh, lovely show as well. I'm just going to flick this up because... F1 fan, he loves the channel and he saw Big Tony, Big Tony, i.e. me and Hector's Daily and he's going for it. He's just outside Glasgow. He was a little starstruck. Don't ever be starstruck around MD, especially myself. I've always said it. Say hello. Come and talk to me. I'm very approachable. I will speak to you about football, Celtic or whatever. Uh, I'm very often quote and say the, the Klopp thing. Uh, Jose Mourinho said he was a special one. Kevin will tell you, we're just normal ones, aren't we, Kevin? We just like our football team. Aye. <laughs> a platform Aye. to express it. So talk about, talk never about the, the never starstruck. I get embarrassed with colleagues. I get, I, I, it's something that, I don't know, I just find it all about. It's very complimentary and it's very humbling. It's the most humbling thing ever. But, so thank you for that. But if you see me in Hector's Deli again, give me a shout and we'll talk. Yeah, nice one. But, yeah, I mean, I... I Agree with you with James Forrest. He, he's still there for a reason, Kevin, isn't he? Basically, mm, mm. so yeah. I would say uh, 
And I'm sure Brendan Rodgers would probably take Gustav Lager, Bielka and Mike Dabrowski aside and say, there's a man there. Have a look at what he has done over the years and look at why he's still here. Because there's something there, you know. Yeah, when you go. They, they need to be looking at their future careers as well. Because you want, you want these young professional footballers to make the best of themselves. Correct. Well, for us, obviously, but you know, going forward for them, for their families, um, they've been given a special gift. Yeah. Um, and you don't want them to waste it, and you want you 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 know you want people around them to support them to be the best people and the best players that they can be. Um, and and you and you want them to take a bit of responsibility for that. And I know I know it's difficult. I know it can be difficult. And it doesn't doesn't really matter how much money they get paid, but you know the temptations, the sacrifices that have to be made at that age. You know the stuff that gets into your head, the stuff that they read, the stuff that people are listening to. Uh, it can be difficult, and you have to. You know, everybody's different. Everybody has their own personality, their own challenges. Nobody knows what goes on behind closed doors, which is part of the manager's, you know, gift set to know his players, to have an instinct and a feeling for them. So you know, we're you know we're, we're entitled to ask questions based on what Brendan Rodgers has said about them. But we want the best for them as, as young men yeah. you know, going forward. We just want them to be true to their ability um, with us, with whatever comes next for them. You know, we, you know, I sometimes think with the Celtic family, if you like, you know, we, we should have a duty of care to everybody that walks through that door um, playing and non plain <clears throat> Yeah. I, I love this from Brown Warrior, just the, the payoff line. The managers are watching these guys every day in training. They know how good they are, irrespective of the viewpoint of the Twitter Steens and Shankleys. <laughs> I think we're all guilty of being Twitter Steens and Shankleys. Uh, Brown <laughs> Warrior, it's a great point, though. Uh, Kevin, would you want to be a Twitter Steen or a Twitter Shankly? Is that a Twitter Either or. Either or. I'll be. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I Twitter Lenny. I think I'm, I think I turned into a Twitter Lenny after European defeats. I need to step away from Twitter after a European defeat. You know, Lenny, love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and Brown Warrior saying both were immense. Of course they were. I, listen, call me either of those. I would be uh, very delighted. I think my job would be done. Might hang up the pen eventually <laughs> if that's the case. But yeah, and I know that so we but a wee bit of flipping there, but yeah, good enjoyed that kind of uh, can I go can on. I indulge myself in go a, on. In a, a bit of Celtic diary? Um, go on, man. So this is today, fifth of December, is the fiftieth anniversary of Harry Hood's hat trick against Rangers in the League Cup semi final. Yay. <laughs> Half the price, twice as good. Yep. Harry Hood, <laughs> for those from a younger generation, Harry Hood was my first Celtic pin-up, um, first Celtic hero, because he came to us from Clyde, and I remember getting, when you used to get the old bubblegum football cards um, in my school days, you paid half a shilling, you got your... Your um, packet of football cards. And it was a whole set to get all the squads of every team. And Harry Hood had come to us from Clyde, and uh, his his football card that had him still in his red and white, his white Clyde strip with the white with the red collar. And me and my pal had a competition to see how many Harry Hood cards we could get <laughs> by the end of a school term. And he was different class, Harry Hood. And um, there was a great song about him. And he stepped up. We played Rangers, League Cup semi-final, 5th of December, 50-odd thousand on the ground. It was during an energy crisis. And Harry scored three. And he scored a fourth as well, which nobody, including the press, nobody could work out why he was denied the fourth goal. Um, and that was a record that stood till Musa Dembele scored, wasn't till, it? Till Musa, Musa Dembele. Yeah, in the 5-1 game. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Yes. I think uh, it was a lot. It was the first hat trick since Harry Hughes. It was the first hat trick in the league against Rangers since Chalmers in '66, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, so uh, Brian Warwick comes in, Harry Hood, the pride of place, no matter who's back in the day, alongside Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Make of that what you will. <laughs> well, he was some, uh, some player, he liked a goal against Rangers too. Yeah, Harry Hood, then was the day, says Hazel <laughs> Finney. Harry Hood, uh, brilliant, love that. Uh, Brian Warwick, Sini, Paul Wilson, Tom McCalligan, he's always a kid alongside Ken Kenny. I think everybody had Ken Kenny, yeah. And Jerry Smith was saying that was his first Celtic Rangers game, his dad took him to it, was raining heavily. There you go, eh? So, excellent. I had brilliant knowledge that. Brilliant, eh? I'd have been one at the time. So, uh, just a wee bit before... I know, this morning I was looking... I was looking for, I was looking for footage of it. No, nah, you don't see footage of it, I'm, you? I mean, maybe my memory's playing tricks on me, but I'm pretty sure I was allowed up to watch the highlights of that game. Um, yeah. So it's not like one of those games that's, I mean, it's a League Cup semi final. There must be footage of it. <laughs> Somebody will have it somewhere. Or maybe it'll be like the 4 2 game and somebody's got a camera, but they kept the lens on and, you know, to get, yeah. <laughs> you can't see it through the dark, you know. But uh, so, yeah, lots of people saying uh, nobody can say why the goal was disallowed, but probably remember about good on Harry Hood and God rest Harry Hood. And there are lots of people at, at Harry Hood is one of their heroes and their favourite player, Mikey Boy. Harry Hood was one of my old man's heroes, what a player. And as you say, Kevin, he, he did like a goal against Rangers, didn't he? Mm. 1971, yeah. Scottish Cup final, couple of goals at Ibrooks, and there, there is still footage of. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, good, some 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 goals uh, late 60s when we were doing the business in Europe. A cracking player. That's what I love about this podcast. We can go off on Harry Hood tangent, <laughs> especially with yourself. And I would know, say, for those who are of an old and even fans of a younger persuasion, if it, if it gets them to have a, a look on uh, YouTube and you know have a look at guys like Harry Hood and all that, then we have done them a service, Kevin. Mm. We have done them a service mm. because these guys should not be forgotten at all. You know, Correct. They, they're a part and parcel of the fabric of Celtic and they're part of the Celtic family. And I've always said it as well that I, I still think that and I, I, people have their own opinions on this, but they sing about the Lisbon Lions, they sing about various players, but I also think that they should sing a chorus and verse of the John Thompson song. Uh, yes. At Celtic yeah. Park, at home games. Uh, you know, just because I... I think it's a wonderful link, you know, to the past. And, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, these guys should never, ever be forgotten. But someone said to me, it's too melancholic and everybody would burst out crying. <laughs> and, and that's a fair point because it is quite a sad song, but I think it's a wonderful song. Even just the, the between the poster stands of ghost, John Thompson was his name. Yeah. Thing, you know, just that, that wee refrain, I think it would be excellent. Uh, just, my, it's always been my... My, my own thoughts on that, you know, because lo lots of people get their, their due and their songs sung about them, but I just think from that kind of era, going back to then, there's not much sung about, uh, you know, players like that, and I think John Thompson in particular is somebody who I would like to see the Celtic fans pick up a chance. So I remember, um, I don't know if they, they still do do this in England, um, before the FA Cup final, we go for the sing Abide With Me. Yeah, they they but they used to, I think they used to hand out um, song sheets for the fans, right? just in case they didn't know the words. So the band right. stuck it up. So suppose it, it was just the tradition. That'd be brilliant, yeah. wouldn't it? If um, I just, it's just always an idea. I just think that it's and it is a poignant song, and it is sad, and I get all that. But I think every time you sing it, it would be a celebration of uplifting. You know, a, a, uplifting. Yeah, a former Celtic hero, you know. But I just, but. Again, I'm a dreamer. Keep telling people, just you know, f football's for dreamers. I'm an eternal optimist and dreamer, right. you know. So it's a, it's one of them. But Kevin, that's nearly fifth, just short of fifty-five minutes. Absolutely brilliant. Love it. Always love a Tuesday. I think I, we all look forward to a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We have good self. And I think, uh, just before we go, say thank you to MPH Group for sponsoring the 
the morning briefing for all your plumbing, heating, kitchen and bathroom needs, as well as a Navian promotion. Check out uh, all the links, the social media links on the description of this video for the MPH group and we say thank you to them. But we also ask you guys to hit that subscribe button, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. That's www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. It costs £4 for four months or £18 for a yearly subscription. You help support top quality journalism in the process. Plunge McNuggets gave us a perfect out, Kevin, today. It's the two Ronnies today. <laughs> so all I can say is it's a good day from me. <laughs> it's a good day it's from, a good day from him. him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that plunge. We'll argue with the toss as to who's <laughs> I, I think I'll be Ronnie Ron, Ron, Parker. No, no, Ronnie Parker. You'll be Ronnie Parker. Be <laughs> uh, love that plunge. Cheers, fella. On that note, thanks for joining, guys. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all the guys who took up the subscription, the Black Friday subscription deal. And thank you to everybody who comments in the uh, the section we, we do our best to to read them all out or read as many as we can out and we thank you for your the ones that who still subscribe uh, every day or every week or every month whatever as you do and how you do that we thank you for that but kevin thanks so much loved it it's always, well, quickest, always always the quickest hour of the day and a tuesday just flies in there you go and okay. uh, if, if you haven't ever watched footage of harry hood I implore you to do that. You won't be just yourself to read. Yeah, yeah you'll, you'll enjoy that. Excellent. Guys, take care. Hamish will be back presenting tomorrow with myself and Ryan as well. So, Kevin, thanks very much. All the best. Have a wonderful Tuesday. All the best, Tony. God bless.